Agape brothers and sisters, Joel here, and today we're going to be reasoning on something kind of abstract actually. We're going to be delving into the nature of the Logos. Come now and let us reason together. We read in the Greek scriptures, primarily, or fundamentally, there was the Logos. This Greek word simply means word, but abstractly, by extension, also means concepts or information, the data that composes the quantum multiverse, the source field of infinite probabilities, and the Logos was with God, or the singularity of awareness, the I am, because the Logos, or this data, is God. The same was primary with God. You see, it further restates this idea. Everything was made by Him, or this one. Remember, gender in many other languages extends to non-gendered objects, and without this Nothing was made. So we can see this information or data is the source of all things that exist. In this is life, and life is the light of men. This very spark that ignites existence in everything that exists is the self-same source of life. That means, according to this, all things that exist have a piece of God's life in them. That's the only way it can exist in the first place. Even the leading edge of fringe science has acknowledged this for quite some time, despite resistance from the tendencies of institutionalized mainstream physics. We like to think of space as empty and matter as solid. But in fact, there is essentially nothing to matter whatsoever. It's completely insubstantial. Take a look at an atom. We think of it as kind of a hard ball. Then we say, oh, well, no, not really. It's this little tiny point of really dense matter right at the center, surrounded by a kind of fluffy probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. But then it turns out that that's not even right. Even the nucleus, which we think of as so dense, pops in and out of existence just as readily as the electrons do. The most solid thing you can say about all this insubstantial matter is that it's more like a thought. It's like a concentrated bit of information. What makes up things are not of more things, but what makes up of things are ideas, concepts, INFORMATION All existence comes from this data, and that's the light that is awareness. It is the ability to realize and see and understand and discern and utilize logic and reason and our imagination and creativity, bringing through that expression into physical matter. The light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. The darkness, or nothingness, can also be called non-existence. That which doesn't exist, cannot exist. Darkness cannot perceive the light, because it's on a different realm of existence. Where light is, there is no darkness. There can be no darkness. Nothing comes from nothing. In order for there to be something, it has to come from somewhere. All existence came from this one, the Logos, the information data bank of all concepts, ideas, objects, and events. This is the Akashic record, the source of all the data in the universe. There's way more to reality and existence than we're currently aware of as humans. I mean, just a mere 200 years ago, we didn't even know about DNA. But that didn't stop life. 
So hook up with the source of data that is the very source of life in all things, including you. And that life is the light that transcends dimensions, meaning it transcends all 10 plus dimensions and not limited to rolling one way down the hill of time in three spatial dimensions. But I'm pretty sure Daryl has something to say about this. Daryl, what do you think? Hey, Joel, you know, I was listening to what you're saying here, and I don't know if I agree with you, you know? Like, sure, you have a point. Like, yeah, there's information. The universe is made up of information, but I'm going to turn on the TV right now, and they're going to tell me that the universe is just a random fluke accident and that we don't have any control. And when I'm living my life, man, I kind of see things like that. Like, who cares whether matter is intelligent or not? Or, Like, I still got my life to live. I still got bills to pay and mouths to feed, you know? There are things going on in this world I know I can't control. For, for many people, life's not fair, man. Like, life's a constant struggle and we're trying to make things better. But it just seems like we constantly get met with a brick wall. So, where's the intelligence in that? Well, that's an interesting point, Daryl. But let me tell you something. Your attitude shapes your experience. Don't let it spiral out of hand and get the better of you. Here's the voice of reason to weigh in on that. The voice of reason! Hey, where's my mule? Our worldview affects how we live. If an infinite data bank is teeming with possibilities, we can align with the highest version of reality, creating harmony for everyone. Now, I know that that sounds like an outrageous claim, maybe even a little bit hippy-dippy. Oh, wow, man. But that's literally what the text means when it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This very power is what will liberate mankind and the entire earth if we simply allow it to flow out into the earth through us. So let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Agape, salam, namaste.